we're getting ready to swap cranks in our uh, LS engine here. Uh, normally when we swap crankshafts, uh, the crankshaft is the first thing to go in the engine. We'll have all the rods, all the pistons out of the way. So we just uh, set up our, our main bearings and then we lay the crank in and then we put our main caps on and we make sure everything rolls smooth. Maybe we'll uh, plastic gauge and uh, take some measurements. On this job, we don't want to disturb the pistons and their bores. We just want to leave all that there in place, leave the rods there. So this is going to be done where we're going to transplant the crankshaft with all the rods and pistons in place. It's going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to make it happen. To keep the pistons from falling out of the bores, uh, not that they're going to just fall out on their own, but in case we, uh, we push them to down or relocate them and they, uh, you know, so we don't have to deal with any with, uh, reseating rings or anything. We bolted down a head gasket. Uh, this is a special head gasket. It's got a really thick center layer. So, uh, we don't have to worry about the sides of it flexing up or anything. Uh, we bolted down a head gasket with some cardboard underneath and, uh, for the head bolt, we have a long piece of rubber. We could just use this, uh, bolt the cylinder heads down and achieve the exact same. I just hate having a bunch of extra weight on the engine stand while I'm rolling the motor around. To leave all the rods in and pull just the crank, uh, we want to have the snout open to put a strap around and we want the rear journal of the crank up so we can put a strap around it. Uh, so there's a specific order to un undoing the rods to leave them all in the motor. We want to start with the second journal up, and then as we roll around clockwise, the first journal will come up, then the third journal will come up, and then the fourth journal will be the last one that we undo uh, the, the con rods from. So we want to always start with the second journal up so we can get all these cam bolts off. And then it's very important to put these caps in the exact order that they come off in the exact direction they were facing. Uh, to help with this, I, uh, I just use a paint pen and write the number of the cylinder on one side of the rod cap going across the brake. So going back together, we know it's going back in the exact same orientation and place. Uh, if we were going to uh, maybe, uh, if we were going to be cleaning these parts and, and, and you know, make them like new and stuff, then I guess I'd be marking them or something like that. But in this spot, there's no, there's no point to that. So. Now we can just push these rods down. Trying not to turn them just so that they clear our crank. And now we can work on getting our main caps off. LS engines use six bolt cross bolted main caps. So the first thing we want to do is release all of the side bolts. Then we want to release the outer bolts and then the inner bolts. And now we can carefully lift the crankshaft out of the hole. The 
we're using sealed power bearings going back together. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different things to say about a lot of different kinds and types and brands of bearings. Uh, sealed power is what your local auto parts store will sell you. They're, uh, they're made by Federal Mogul. Federal Mogul has been a brand that has been around for a long time. And uh, we have no reason not to trust these bearings. Uh, we've already wiped them all down. We've already inspected them all for any uh, nicks or anything like that. And we wiped them all down with acetone and they're uh, pretty much ready to go. I did that step off camera. I'm always amazed at how just one little tiny little piece of a tab on one side can stop the whole bearing from wanting to spin. And that does it. Going out, coming apart, setting up the bearings is pretty quick. Going back together, we're going to use our cherry picker to suspend the uh, crankshaft up in the air. So we can lower it in nice and slow. And now we're just going to lower the crank down in a little bit at a time. When it starts getting close, we'll make sure our uh, connecting rods are lined up before we set it on the bearings. Uh, off camera, I pre-lubed all of our bearings and all of our crank journals, so nothing's going together dry. Before we start putting uh, even the main bearing or the main caps on, the first thing we got to do is we got to get all the piston, our connecting rods reattached so the motor can be rolled around and stuff. It'll be harder to get our hands in there when all of the uh, main bearings are in place, our main caps. So right now is just a really good time for doing that. But uh, we're done with the cherry picker. Here we are setting up our last bearing. All these caps are numbered too. Now I like to use an impact gun and just run my bolts down to uh, zero lash, maybe give them one click with the hammer lightly. And that's it. I, uh, I'm gonna go over all these bolts, take them all out one by time, one at a time, and make sure that each path has been cleared of oil before I torque them down. I just wanted to get the bearings back together and protect it before I start sending any type of uh, impurities around. And now we can uh, throw a bolt in the crank and we can start rolling the crank a little bit and work on getting our couple of uh, rod caps on that we hadn't got on before we start rolling the crank around and undoing one rod at a time and throwing in the new rod bearings. Uh, I left the rod bearings alone because that would have just been one more moving piece in part to try to set up and deal with the bearings falling out of the rods as we're rolling it around and trying to set the crank in. So really when you're transplanting the crank, you just want to get the crankshaft in first and leave everything else alone. And then once the crankshaft is in and can be rolled, then you can deal with bringing each journal up to the high point undoing one rod at a time and just swapping out your rod bearings going down the line. And that's what we're going to do now and, uh, and this whole thing will be done.
And we're swapping the last two rod bearings right now. Just pick this up, pop this bearing out. Get the bearing in. Dab of Lucas. Smear all around. And we'll set them aside. Push the rod down. Push it over here. Up the bearing out. Wipe down any oil that might be present. Pop the new bearing in. Dab it, Lucas. Spread it all over. Pull it up. And put the rag cap on in the same direction. We haven't tightened anything down to this point. We're just swapping bearings and running stuff down to zero lash. Once everything is done, we'll go back and we'll torque everything. We'll set our torch right and we'll be done with it. These bearings actually don't look too bad. But, uh, you know, you put in a new crank, it, uh, it, it deserves new bearings. I mean, who else to say that? And I'm sure if we, uh, if we uh, plastic gauge and measured those, we would find there was a little bit of play in them too. They had a lot of miles on them. Push the piston down. When we're doing this, we want to be really careful not to uh, scratch the journal on the crank with the uh, connecting rod. I'm pushing the connecting rod down enough that I could swing it the full throw and not touch the machine surface of the crank. Main cap on. Letters face the same way. The numbers, I'm sorry. And now that all the bearings are in, we'll just roll the motor one or two times to make sure everything feels smooth and nothing feels like it's in a bind at this point. And it does. Everything feels really nice. From here, we'll go one by one. We'll tighten down all the mains. Then we'll tighten down the rod bearings. And we'll verify we still roll nice and smooth. And, uh, and then we can move on to putting the cam in. And here we are with the motor all buttoned up. Everything's torqued down. Uh, we've poured out some oil across everything just to keep all our stuff wet. And uh, everything turns nice and smooth, the entire rotating assembly. No binding, no dragging, no scratching, no scraping. From here, all we need to do is put the crank sprocket on. There's a keyway on the crankshaft. The crank sprocket has to go on to that keyway. And then uh, we can press it on the rest of the way. There's a couple of steps that we've skipped here on this process and are skipping. And uh, I just want to take a quick minute and discuss those. First off, this is plastic gauge. This is how we measure clearances between the crankshaft and the bearing. And it's very important that we measure this, especially anytime we're swapping crankshafts. And the only reason I haven't actually done this on this yet is because it's a Chevrolet part number going into a Chevy crank that hasn't been milled. Uh, anytime we, we mill, we're gonna use over or undersized bearings and uh, and anytime you throw in an aftermarket crank, it just introduces uh, chances for things to be out of spec and it becomes so important that we check and verify these specs. But from working as a, as a tech for a whole career, the things that the manufacturer design and make the, the manufacturer parts are meant to be taken off a shelf and installed on a car at a dealership. And at the dealership, they really don't like people having to check and then mill and then check and then mill stuff. So from my experience, when you buy a crankshaft or an engine internal part from, the, from Chevrolet, it just goes right in and its specs are always right on point. Uh, another issue is balancing. Um, these crankshafts from the manufacturer are balanced to a specific bob weight of the engine that they are being used in. This crankshaft goes to LS3, 
So it is balanced to the bob weight of LS3 connecting rods and LS3 pistons. Uh, the L92, L9H motor uses the exact same part number con rods and the pistons, while they are different, they're really close. They're the same 6.2 liter bore. The only difference between these pistons and the LS3 pistons is these pistons have a 3cc uh, valve relief in them. And the best information I can find on this is there are, these pistons also have a little bit of extra material around the crown that keeps them at about the same weight as what an LS3 piston was. So I have every reason to believe that the weight of balancing of this crankshaft is just fine. Uh, I would not go trying to take a 6.2 liter crank that was balanced for 6.2 bob weight and try to put it in a 5.3 because this is going to be a much smaller bore and it's going to have much smaller lighter weight pistons. Uh, in that situation I would, I would very much want to balance it. But um, that's it. Our crankshaft is in. We're going to see how it all works and uh, up next should be uh, that bald eagles can getting that in and uh, I think the heads are ready at the machine shop. We'll get those if it goes back and uh, we'll probably be setting up the valve springs in the next video.